So the miller took the money and spent the rest of the day thinking about the strange meeting, which had presented him with more money than he had ever seen. What could he possibly do with all this money? I think that the first thing I should do is buy food for my family. The miller took out ten dollars and wrapped the rest in cloth. He went to the market and bought supplies and a good piece of meat to take home. One fish, please. Here you go. On the way home, the miller was attacked by a bird that had smelled the meat. The miller fought the bird, but he lost the bundle of money. Ah, uh, I should have just let the hungry bird have the meat. Instead, he took my two hundred dollars. The two men will think I'm a thief. I should have thought carefully and bought nothing. Yes, I should have gone straight home and none of this would have happened. It has been our luck to be poor, but have faith and someday our luck may change. Three months passed and the wealthy men had not come back yet. But one day the two men returned to the village and as soon as they saw the miller they approached him to ask if his luck had changed. The miller told the two men the whole story. Luckily they believed him. Let's try this again. Maybe the outcome will be different. But well, why would you even trust me this time? Maybe you would be better off giving this money to a different man. No, we want you to give this money, give you this money, because you're an honest man. And if we are going to settle this argument, you must take this money. Thanks. I promise to do my best. As soon as the man left, the miller began to think of what he should do with the money. Hmm. What he... should I do with the money? The miller went straight home. When he arrived, his wife was not there. He went to the pantry and hid the money in a jar filled with bran. He believed this was the safest spot. The miller left for a couple hours. When he came back, his wife was there with a jar of clay. She's not here. Look, my dear. Look, my husband. Today I brought some good clay, which to whitewash the entire house. And how did you buy the clay if we don't have any money? Well, the man who was selling the clay was willing to trade for jewelry, money, or anything of value. The only thing we had of value was the jar of bran. I, isn't it wonderful? I think we have enough <laughs> to whitewash the entire house. Uh, oh, you crazy woman! We're ruined again! But why? Today, I met the same two friends who gave me the $200 in the first place. They gave me another $200 after I explained what happened. I put it inside the jar to keep it safe. The same jar that you sold? Now, as, now we're as poor as before. Men will surely think I'm a thief now. Let them think what they want. We only have, we will only have in our lives what do, the good Lord wants. It is, and it is our lot to be poor until God wills otherwise. The miller was consoled, and the next day he went to work as usual. Time passed, and one day the two wealthy friends came to ask the miller how he'd done with the second two hundred dollars. The miller thought they were going to accuse him of being a thief, but he decided to be truthful. That is why poor men remain honest. They don't have money, so they can't get in trouble. I do find your stories hard to believe. I think you gambled and lost the money. This is why you're telling us this wa these wild tales. Thank you, woman. The miller was ready for them to just walk away, when the wealthy woman who believed in luck gave the miller a worthless piece of lead. It brought her no luck so far, she wa but she wanted the miller to give it a try. The two, the woman left, still debating their views of life. Well, since this lead is practically worth it, I guess I'll just stick it in my jacket pocket. The miller forgot all about the lead until he arrived home. He tossed it under the table and thought nothing of it. He and his family soon went to bed. They awoke to a knock 